Good morning, everyone. Thank you to the joint virtual third lecture related to countable transitions that we have been working together. The class is approaching sustainability from environmental economy and ecological economy. First of all, I would like to remind you this class has a simultaneously interpretation from Spanish to English and English to Spanish. So you can config in the button that says interpreting in the screen of your computer. I briefly saying that we're gonna be the activities that we're gonna cover today. After this first introduction, we're going to discuss three main topics. The first topic related to this, related to different environmental, related to environmental and ecological perspective. And the third topic, the sustainable development the goals debate. Every single topic is gonna to take 30 minutes. And in every single topic, we're going to come with presentations with the two guests, uh, uh, professors guests, and we're going to have enough time for our students can share uh, their opinions and comments and ask some questions. You can ask uh, uh, students or teachers, whatever you believe it's okay. But first of all, I would like to uh, tell you a briefly presentation related to what is tragics because maybe some students, they don't know about some initiative trajects is a transnational center, just transition energy, climate and sustainability aims to support and strengthen transcontinental exchange, research and education and transition towards a sustainable future. This center works different topics related to, for example, energetical transition, and uh, counts uh, with uh, different partners overall colombia and germany and south africa for students i invite you to continue twitter of triads in order to be with their importance and the opportunities because there are too many opportunities on interchange uh, when they're gonna be able of all these kind of events and the classes together as well. And so many activities are going to develop these coming years as well, because you're going to be reporters on different activities. The things that I was telling you is the name, it's approaching sustainability for environmental economy and ecological economy, and counts with, uh, we guess, we invited, to courses that are happening currently. First one in Flensburg, Germany, and uh, environmental economics. The professor is Marina Blanc, who is with us today, is gonna be with us today. And the second one is uh, ecological economy. I'm sorry, it's Magdalena's University. I'm sorry, Magdalena's University. Yes, I'm sorry. There was something that we had in, in class number two. So we're gonna go through the first topic because it's gonna be introduction to environmental economics and ecological economics. So Marina, I'm gonna give you the floor. Yeah, thank you very much uh, for this introduction. Um, I hope that you all can see my slides now. Um, I will begin with a short introduction. So my name is Marina Blom. I'm from Germany. I studied energy and environmental management at the uh, Europa Uni de Flensburg. Um, in the, um, I work 
as a project manager for wind farms in northern Germany. And now I'm a research assistant at the uh, Europa Universität Flensburg. And my main topics uh, is that I'm doing the lecture and project on the development of participatory future electricity scenarios in the countries Morocco, Jordan and Tunisia. And I'm currently doing my PhD on the energy transition in the MENA region. Um, and an additional focus is also the sustainable production of hydrogen. So my main research focus or my motivation basically is to find ways so that countries or more the people living in the countries can benefit from the energy transition. And I will begin now with the introduction of environmental economics. So what is environmental economics? Um, environmental economics analyzes economic activities and their effects on the environment. So basically human influences on the environment. And there we have different topics that are important. For example, we have the sustainable development. So a development that seeks to meet the needs and aspirations of the present without compromising the ability to meet those of the future. Perhaps you have heard of this definition before. Um, then we have environmental and social effects of market failure. So what is a market failure? For those of you who don't know, um, market failure describes a situation in which a market is unregulated or not regulated appropriately um, to produce an outcome that is beneficial for the society. For example, if we have a monopoly power of one company, the output for the society is not optimal. Then another topic is the internalization of external effects. And an external effects, um, effect describes a side effect of a normal market transaction um, that affects a third party that is not involved in the actual market transaction, trans, um, transaction itself. And the third party can be either better off or worse off. And the aim of the internalization of these effects is that these um, effects go back into the market decision. And then we have valuing the environment. There we try to find techniques where we place monetary values on environmental goods, for example. Um, then we have environmental policy instrument instruments where we uh, search for policy instruments that um, um, like human influences benefit the environment. Um, so for example, the introduction of, an, of a carbon tax so that it's um, so that you need to pay a tax when you would like to emit um, CO2. And then we have the use of natural resources, either fossil resources or renewable resources. And then also within the environmental economy, we have also a view on the ecological economy. And perhaps that would be different from those that we will hear afterwards from Andrea. So I present now the view from the environmental economy perspective on the ecological economy perspective. So um, from our point of view, ecological economy attempts to redefine basic economic concepts to make them more applicable to environmental problems. So basically, um, the focus is on the environment and non, not on the economic aspects within, um, as within the uh, environmental economics. Um, three main aspects uh, are important. So the definition uh, of planetary boundaries that limit the environmental impact of economic activities. So planetary boundaries for example, describe different critical values of biophysical indicators on Earth so uh, that are control variables for the safe operating space for humanity. So it also, uh, already seems a bit more ecological and biophysical related than the environmental economies. Then we have the introduction of a carrying capacity for a sustainable level of the population and consumption. And that means um, that um, we need to find levels for population and consumption that can be sustained by uh, the availability of resources. So that can be sustained by the environment. And then we have also um, the case that the natural capital disappreciation is deducted in natural um, accounting systems so that we have also a loss in GDP if we have a loss of the environment, for example. 
two um, there are two different uh, aspects of sustainability. So we have the strong and the weak sustainability, and I will now present the view of the environmental economy um, view on the both aspects of the sustainability. So I begin with the weak sustainability, and that is the view that natural capital depletion is justified as long as it's compensated for with uh, increases in human-made capital. So that assumes that human-made capital can substitute for most types of natural capital, so that there's a substitution of resources and human-made capital. And there um, the three aspects of sustainability, environment, society, and economy are somehow related to each other or connected to each other with some overlaps. Concerning the strong sustainability, that is the view that natural and human-made capital are generally not uh, substitutable and therefore natural capital level should be maintained so that there is no possibility of the substitution. And it's um, the concept is more that there are not some overlaps, but that the society and economy circles are part of the environment and that the environment defines the boundaries. And um, from, from the view of environmental economics, it's more that environmental rep uh, economics represent the weak sustainability and that the ecological economics um, represents the strong sustainability. And now I gave the floor to Andrea. Thank you very much, Marina. Well, I do believe this debate between environmental, economical, and ecological is going to be rich. All the discussions related to the project that we're here and Andrea has telling us for moderator. I'm going to introduce myself. And afterward, I'm going to talk about the West is going to be the rich for the Tradix project. I'm a professor, full-time professor at the Faculty of Business and Economics of Magdalena University, director of the researches, seed energy transition of this same uh, university. I have a doctorate in environmental science and technology and master in environmental yeah. studies from the Autonomous yeah. University of Barcelona as well. It's really yeah. important to, it was a very important school when I made my doctor because it's a strong school related to economical yeah. economies and the Hispan uh, uh, environment. And that's why we have been a speaker related to ecological speaking. I'm going to tell you about what about this, because it's very important, these kind of things. In addition, I have an, uh, because of Plymouth, England as well, and Cadiz, Spain. I'm an economist as a professor, as a professor, but now I'm in the critical side of the economical related to the environment and uh, environmental justice as well. I do believe this discussion between environmental, economic, and, and because it's very important in the tragic framework because we're discussing about the sustainability. And of course, environmental economy and ecological economy, we have been moving forward. Science has moved forward related to the science of sustainability as well. And tragedies because it's just a transnational center so it's going to be a transdisciplinary job as well, which is which implies from many disciplines, from many points of view, we think what is the meaning of that tra sustainable transitions? What is the meaning of that? Because that is really important because these classes together are really important discussing these two focusings, even with uh, Marina's professor, we have uh, prepared, we had prepared final discussion precisely about sustainability. Well, on the other hand, I would like to clarify Magdalena University is a partner territorial project of Tradis, because Tradis, as you said, as uh, we were explained before, Andrea, our moderator, Tradis had his three hubs with the Technical University, at Berlin, Cal Berlin, South Africa, 
and the National University at Colombia. Mag the University of Magdalena is configuring between tragedies as a advisor, territorial assessor with the local territory planification. So we're like the support access. So with these territorial access as well, and even I call them that we bring here within tragedies that vision, South vision of the South ones, South of Souths. Tragedies is uh, looking for, which is this kind of transition in Latin America. So of course the University of Magdalena is confirming if the Colombian market as well. And our job is focused in the carbon side as well, precisely because we give this focus related to what is happening in the territories related to transitions. Now, I want to emphasize in the graphic that is to the side, to the superior side, and our job starts from the study of ecological and political, ecological and global chain of the carbon, which means we analyze conflicts and scale. So that is the beginning just of our study. So these we're gonna use this carbon of this cold thing as well, related to sustainability as well. Well, I'm going to go to the next slide related to what Marina already presented, the introduction of the environmental economy. Now I'm going to present of the sustainability of ecological economy. For example, to us, we consider it as sustainability science. Why? Because it is from the study of the basic analytics. It arises from the analytical ideas of the basic sciences, like uh, ecologists, physics, or so many thinkers that 20, 19th century and 20th century, they started thinking about the economical system. So they say, well, how about my, our, my science, my knowledge of my basic science, like physics, how should be economy? Taking into account uh, that this word is ordered because of the eternal dynamic laws, how should be that economical system? Taking into account that we have uh, limited planet and resources limited as well, limited resources as well. So taking into account the eternal dynamics laws, how could be that economy? So that was the thing that the ecological economy that was born, how should be and uh, from the knowledge of the basic sciences as well, is just a transdisciplinary focusing who brings many paramount and theoricals from many disciplines to understand the way it works. And in addition, something pretty key as well is looks the economy as a subsystem of the biosphere. It looks at the economy as a subsystem of the biosphere. It's just a bio subsystem. Everything that's happening in the earth planet, it is an open to entry and exit of energy and material. And how is gonna be wasted those weights? It means of them. How do they interact related to the basic things and the basics? So, and how they influence? And how's gonna see these uh, economical and the uh, how the influence is. This is a critical, although there are criticisms or economic valuation methods, every single economic systems are very critic because of this economy. So exists that the ecological vision of the environmental vision is critical. So uh, and, uh, methods of economical valuation that we say the first thing is gonna 
say we can to influx values as well because there is some socio-cultural and exists an ecological and the importance of the ecological importance of every single element and even exceeds that criticisms as well the ecological economy from the ecology we say okay there are some methods that works for the environmental justice because in some cases or conflicts or legal issues or suit laws or everything we need some calculation related to this as well so the economical valoration works for that ecological vision, environmental vision as well, and those tools, they could help to the environmental justice, but they are not the only tools, the only ones, because they have plurality of tools and values and that uh, system can be part of the environmental justice. And well, related to the debate of sustainability, weak or strong, or super strong. I just uh, bring it up the discussion as a Latin American thinker from Uruguay. His name is Eduardo Godinas. And as a thinker, he has been writing about the topic of the related to Latin America and the way he overcomes. And that thinking. related to sustainability. And I really like from him, he says sustainability should be super strong. Because it has to be some changes. And there are some changes related to structures and concepts. Sustainability as weak or as strong is anthropocentric. So related to this, it's a really strong, should be egocentric in terms of Earth, planet, and ecosystems. The economical system as well, and he describes, first of all, has to be the quality of life overall, over economical growth, over GDP and everything, quality of life, and of course, ecological quality. In order to have a quality of life, first of all, is the ecological quality. Uh, and that applies as well to be included as well, and plurality of knowledge. In Latin America, it's very relevant because we are asked uh, for to share the ancestral indigenous knowledge of the Afro-Americans as well, and the pe peasants as well plurality of knowledge as well. He speaks about uh, the necessary justice is necessary, social and ecological justice is necessary. And this valuation should be plural where other forms of knowledge are respected and interests. And uh, it's not only just uh, first the economical side, besides the respect of some other knowledge as well, which this implies to recognize ourselves as independence, uh, but also eco-dependence of the nature as well, as uh, we use this uh, material and energy implies when you use this material and energy, we are eco-dependence done. That was that first part of that introduction to economic, economical. I'm going to give the floor to Marina related to the second part. And uh, Andrea, maybe we're going to give some minutes if the students have so many kind of comments or questions related to this first topic. You can raise your hand and to open your mic whoever who wants to participate or to ask some questions. And you can speak in Spanish, in English, whatever language, because interpreter does his job. So don't be shy, please, and whatever language you want.
This is a virtual class where students participate and they feel motivated to discuss. Perhaps we can also ask the, the question of uh, what do you think about that we distinguish between the ecological economy and the environmental economy? So do we need that or is the environmental economy perhaps not strong enough that we need in any case the ecological economy or that we also need to talk about the super strong uh, sustainability? So perhaps you have um, an opinion on that or might also experience this. Um, on different aspects that we presented. Hey, good morning. Hello, Moises. We give you the floor. Can you hear me? Well, my name is Moises San Juanelo. I'm from the Magdalena's University. I'm a student for economic ecology. Ecology. I would like to have very clear the concepts for sustainability, a strong and weak. So you basically mean that the the differences between uh, the the weak and the strong sustainability. Should I explain it in more detail again? Yes, please. Yeah. Okay, yes, so basically, we could say that we begin with the weak sustainability, or, or we begin with the term sustainability. So sustainability means that we have uh, aspects, uh, including uh, the environment, uh, the economy and the society, so that for every, um, for example, every project that we are working on, we need to take into account the environmental perspective, the society, the societal perspective, and the economy perspective, so that we don't, uh, so that we are not allowed, for example, to build a factory without incorporating environmental aspects, if we um, would like to be sustainable or if we would like to act sustainable. And when we uh, talk about the weak sustainability, um, then it means that we are more looking on technological innovations and monetary compensations for the influences that humans have on the environment. So that we are searching for techniques where we place a monetary value to incorporate environmental effects. So, for example, negative environmental effects to uh, account for it and have it in our um, cost benefit analysis, for example, so that we incorporate in this market decision. Um, and so that it is okay to have somehow a degree of environmental degradation. And if, if we, uh, and that we are trying to find a way where we can allocate um, scarce resources so that we, we know that we have scarce resources, but we try to find ways how to optical, optim um, optimal allocate them. And if we talk about the strong sustainability, then uh, we consider that the economy is a subsystem uh, or is in frames of the environment and that we need to conserve critical um, resources, for example. And that it is not enough just to, to um, place a monetary value on the resources, for example, but that there are also physical boundaries that we need to take into consideration, which we don't, uh, which we are not allowed to exceed. Perhaps Andrea, you can also add to this what I've said. Well, there is a question in the comments from Juri Candelario, thank you. There is another way to ask questions through the chat. It says, we have some cases in Colombia of territories from their public policies. They are fostering and working to a strong sustainability. From my point of view as a teacher, as an academic person, the territories per se, and to be part, they are going to be able 
to see to this because go mogany and their needs by themselves they are trying to look for those parameters or the way they can survive related to be sustainable and non-sustainable as well in the territories there are too many initiatives related to the transitions and in pro of, uh, of these uh, to mitigate uh, related to we're talking about the impacts in certain topics and uh, suddenly and this uh, they use these resources and they're trying to be sustainable so there is something that came up suddenly this is the sustainability weak sustainability or strong sustainability or super strong sustainability is a discussion among academics to understand the way of the sustainability and i love that question because i do think related to communities in fact that discussion on a strong or weak related to the territories as well that's what we do related to those theories uh, those thoughts as well related to these territories there is a gap related to these territories as well related to godina's talk i do think so there are the social. It's gonna be really strong ones. There are the struggles with the communities in order to do the resources. Related to the referrals, related to economicals in the language Spanish, and uh, related to the poor, to the poor people economy the communities depend on those resources because of those resources will be sustainable possible of course it has its contradictions and criticisms as well related to communities and territories related to the bad thing related to extract from themselves from their own benefits no matter others benefits i see too many hands raised i just released two questions so remain your questions to move forward as well i saw blanca raised her hand first good morning my name is blanca diaz and uh, basically i do think it's really important and really interesting the concept of systemic ways of economics of uh, on their the environmental thing as well and it's really important as well it's really interesting what andrea was saying when the uh, ratifies all the is uh, within the territories That is uh, really important because there are many act players and they're leading with some, uh, it's gonna be with the first sector. Why do you consider, first of all, what do you consider are the most relevant aspects in the third sector to mobilize for a sustainable economy to be able to get into more players and needs of the systems. Well, I could answer, but I would like Marina, what do you advise? What is your advice in order to have a sustainable economy? Of course, I'm gonna give you my point of view related to the territory. 
as well, but from our focusing, it should include, it has to be included, participative as well. It should include values and interests of every single in order to be sustainable. And there is a discussion, Blanca, remind me in Spanish, there is a discussion between sustainability and susten sustainability. Maybe for Marina, for Andrea, this discussion in English is not too relevant because it exists just one word in English. But in Spanish, there are two words. And on the other hand, we have been discussing with the academy sustainability is more related to sustainability, economical sustainability of, uh, of any system. And sustainability is more about the scale of the character, which is gonna be the environmental part, social side and economical side as well. I guess that's pretty much we have been discussing. There are too many, there are some translations and there you get confused. For example, ODS of the sustainable, uh, sustainable objectives using sustainability and has to be sustainability. So there is a discussion
in the development of the territories. How sectors within that important work that we develop from our territories. Think in the territories. Am I wrong? I'm just saying your questions if I meant myself. Yes, Professor, how could we introduce if they publish them and uh, will be a territorial accomplishment? Good, Joaquin, thank you. Thank you. Well, these are the, uh, I'm going to give my perspective. The ecological economy is a tool to understand, it's a science to understand the system, so how to understand the way and the different disciplines, what gives us some tools and concepts to understand what is happening in territories. So this ecological economy to understand sustainability, to understand is a subsystem of the Earth planet and uh, it's a concept which is going to be focused in the territory. You can see it precisely uh, uh, peasant. And the, you know, these are the features of the ground as well. The harvest, you know, in order to pour the ground, in order to know the limit way, we can uh, work the ecological understanding. It's a scale because economists are they are to pretenders. And they're really proud when economy, they think economy is everything. So economy is just a subsystem because they're really pushy, they're really overbearing or arrogant people. This is just a call of attention. So I really is that. So I would like to see and to, to, to listen from Marina, her, her point of view about it. Well, basically, to be honest, I'm not sure if I understood it right, or if you are talking about special territories in Colombia, or if it was just a, a general question. Um, so, so I would uh, uh, perhaps um, say some words about how environmental economics can be uh, helpful basically to, to for decision making or so if I understood it right okay so well basically it's also that for environmental economics it's not that you have one option or one right uh, um, uh, a solution that is beneficial for the end have these three aspects and you try to compensate negative if, um, aspects and um, that you uh, also try um, to find ways that uh, for example you place monitor values on negative environmental effects so that that you can then go to decision makers and tell them okay your your project would have these kind of negative effects. Either uh, they are just environmental effects or social effects or or is, uh, um, aspects of environmental justice that are not correct and, and that you um, go to the 
and trying to convince them that these things need to be. So you have different options. Um, we talk about social aspects. If you talk about what kind of policy instrument could be the right example, or should you give economic in, um, incentives to the users that they, is, for example, too expensive, that different um, different aspects of what uh, environmental economics um, need to convince decision makers if, if the the things um, make sense that they are um, saying or not. Thank you very much, Marina. So we're going to go to the same part and for the second topic as well. The second topic to start or no, Marina to start? No, nah, I want the Marina starts. Sorry, I searched for the button to unmute. Um, yes, so I will now uh, go to the second um, part of our presentation. So it's, it's basically the environmental perspective of, of the climate crisis. Um, and well, basically we have different terms. Sometimes it's called global heat. Things. Sometimes it's called global change. You can also call uh, call it climate crisis. And the, the 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 expression climate crisis, I think, makes it more urgent um, in, when we're talking about the climate changes that are occurring. We'll talk about the um, uh, crisis or more about the aspects of the climate economy puts uh, putting them into cost benefit and um, to place monetary there are also different ways of trying to find these values sometimes you um, ask people about their willingness to pay for for example the, the conservation of a forest nearby um, or um you try to find out how much money a person spending on traveling to a site um to then find out what's the worth of the site for the persons um but i see that there are a lot of critiques of these techniques um but at the other hand um it's also important that we try somehow also in our current economy it's important to place somehow a value on the environment because if we're not doing that then the the environment has a value of zero and that's also so for the politicians uh, for them who are taking the decisions and that's also correct i think um so this is again a way of uh, convincing uh, decision makers about the costs and the benefits uh, of different projects and this is one important uh, aspect of the environment uh, of the environmental economy and i think this is also um, when we talk about the climate crisis really important because environmental effects will get more and more and um, if we uh, would like also to to, um, to build more uh, economic um, to build uh, our, or to, to increase the economic activities, it will be more and more important that we're using uh, the environment as uh, from the human uh, influence. Um, so that this is one aspect of how we really can try to incorporate um, the, the environment into the decision making processes. Uh, a second fact would be that the environmental economies uses the concept of the polluter pays principle in which the polluter itself should pay a compensation fee of the damage that he or she is causing. So this polluter pays principle is, uh, is uh, often used in environmental economy perspective. Um, so uh, it's a reasonable calculation of the damages, but as uh, well as uh, but as well as the compensation measures, so that we need to find out how big is the damage and how much should the compensation cost. Um, and should compensation, for example, need to be high enough that companies are not just paying taxes, 
uh, for the emissions that they release, um, but that they are also tr striving to use more abatement uh, measures so that they will be more environmentally sustainable in their activities that they are doing. Um, a third aspect is that um, the increase of, of the greenhouse gas emissions uh, is both the result of environmental externalities, so external effects, and of an excessive and unequal overuse of the common property resource, fresh air, for example. Um, and that uh, if or that because of this uh, fact that we didn't try to internalize the environmental uh, neg the negative environmental effects um, in the past, um, that now we have the problem um, that we really need to reduce our emissions more and more, because in the past it was just for free that we really ex uh, excessively used the environment, um, and there um, it's important to or it's important to know that there are no property rights for common property resources, basically. And that's, that makes it so um, difficult also to find the real um, compensation amount, for example. And the fourth fact is that environmental justice um, tries to achieve a fair treatment and involvement of all people, regardless of race, uh, color, origin, or income, with respect to the development and the implementation of environmental laws. And I think these environmental justice is um, really important when we talk about the climate crisis, because it's also a fact um, that when we talk about the commitments that need to be done in frames of the Paris Agreement, for example, to reduce the average uh, temperature increase, um, then people living uh, in, in countries where the development needs to be increased or the access to energy needs to be increased, they don't, uh, they, they should not be. Um, uh, forced to reduce emissions at the same amount as, for example, industrialized countries are. So that there, this environmental justice plays a, a very big role. And that also the countries that are more advanced should also um, financially support the countries that need to increase the development. Then I would like to talk a little bit about how we use environmental economics in our resource, the research um, in Flensburg and in Berlin, because we are basically a team of researchers working a lot together, working a lot uh, on different uh, topics. And I just um, thought that I would like to focus on four things. So uh, basically what I was working on is that we developed uh, future energy scenarios to achieve carbon neutrality by 2050. And we didn't do that while sitting at our desk, but we uh, used participatory workshops um, together with the, the people working in the countries, what are their visions about the future and what they think could be uh, or is the right option for their country um, and what is, what is also necessary for them as a society to benefit from the environmental transition. Um, and then uh, a lot of my colleagues are, are working on the phase out of uh, the use of coal in the energy sector. Um, and they are uh, doing a lot of analysis of lock-in effects, uh, which prevent currently the phase out of coal. But they give also recommendations of how this coal exit uh, can be done sustainably so that um, so or social just so that the people living in areas where currently a lot of coal is extracted, uh, what can be or what is necessary for the people they're having uh, having work in these um, areas, so that they can also benefit from energy transition. Um, what we also worked on was a survey about the willingness to pay to avoid a certain technology in the surrounding of uh, your living area or if, if of a living area. So we asked people in northern uh, Germany uh, what they would be willing to pay for to avoid technology. And there were the, they had the choice between different technologies, even fossil technologies, renewable te technologies, so all kinds of electricity producing technologies. And uh, the result was that they was that they were willing to pay 
more to um, avoid uh, fossil um, technologies instead of renewable technologies. So that I really were um, willing to pay a certain amount month to avoid that the coal power plant, for example, is built in the surrounding living area. Um, and then we are working on the development of sustainability criteria for the pr production of green hydrogen. Because hydrogen is currently um, a lot uh, in, uh, in the media and also among politicians. And uh, there are just, so there is a color code of how hydrogen can be produced. And um, the best option in these discussions is uh, currently green hydrogen. But green hydrogen just says that the hydrogen that we are producing comes from renewable resources. But we also talked about uh, sustainability today. And I think there are a lot more criteria that are needed that the hydrogen can be produced in a sustainable manner. So that also that you really also take into account social aspects, that you take into account um, environmental aspects. So not just uh, the production of uh, electricity that is needed for the hydrogen. Yeah, so I give the floor now to Andrea. Thank you very much, Marina. I'm going to share my screen. According to the climate change, I'm going to give the perspective of ecological climate of the climate change as well. And those perspectives are going to be together with my research, because in fact, that is what I've been working on since my doctor and uh, the ecological political of this uh, coal economy as well. And how is that perspective of my ecological within uh, that's what's that's perspective how do we study what we do from the ecological side is to study economic ecological conflicts environmental conflicts of that climate crisis these two images that i'm showing here i really like to show them because in fact we talk about destruction of coal and Colombia of the fossil fuel and possible transition. Uh, we forget the process. Uh, what happened with that process in every single chain of scale? of the seal fuels and there are some uh, social movements they strike against those uh, well the way of the ecological side related to the fossil fuel and uh, is through is the study of the environmental conflicts and the social movements and the international side as well. The extraction coal, for example, there are some communities in the Caribbean module, there are some indigenous. What about no more mine, closed mines? Because they damage the hydric resources and they affect their territories and there are some conflicts through all that coal extraction as well. And in the same way, the coal moves forward physically to reach their final source, will be burned in the plants. And their thermoelectrical plants in Europe. So it's going to be produced some conflicts as well, and to produce some any 
social movements as well. For example, it comes transportation related to the train. There are some Cesar and Magdalena's populations because they have been affected because of this transportation as well, because the train goes through the middle of their populations as well. And there have been so many accidents as well, around 200 people, they have lost their lives in those train accidents that they carry coal because because of the usage of passengers and here it started being for commercial usages in a way that it has been planned for passengers mindset to the level of europe where europe arrives there is a reaction when unimportant uh, movements they ask for and the climate change it has to be a change of the system system change of the system not of the weather change that is a really important sentence we need to start working on those demands as well as this climate crisis as well and in this figure that i have to my right side is the cold chain between colombia and puerto rico and Colombia exports coal to Puerto Rico. It's a really resistance, and there is some communities in the coal extractions. And, and in this, and as Puerto Rico with social movements, where they do the resistance of the usage of the ashes because the, that coal reaches thermoelectric as it's burned to produce energy and the thermoelectrical doesn't do a good usage of the ashes and those ashes are getting sick to the communities that live around there and these plants is to the south of puerto rico so this means that through this ecological study we already started to give some environmental things from destruction and to the final consumption of these uh, fossil fuels and we see there are too many something inequality and unfairs and distractions and uh, in that consumption we have been dedicated these studies at uh, this environmental and related to this and how since my research related to economical analysis to a study the climate change crisis and first of all in my job we have identified related to this related to this first stage these environmental assets there are two very important aspects as well in English. I don't know how you're translating if there's environmental uh, liabilities. There is a uh, legislation. And in Latin America, there are too many countries when we have some legislation. So in Colombia, we don't have any And, and there is not any kind of relationship among them. So those environmental liabilities are in debt to investigate and to evaluate and to legislate over those ones because in Colombia, just any moment, this year is going to come about uh, some coal mining industry. We close and we leave. There is not a legislation related to those environmental liabilities because we're not ready for doing this transition and we are in an ethical transition and we're not ready from the studies of those environmental liabilities to legislate about it so the students should ask us what about the environmental liabilities what is the meaning of that from the ecological economy we call it as every single damage not compensated because of the mining companies. Non compensated causes noise as well. 
because the mining companies, they say, uh, we say what our the state says as well, and uh, this uh, mining is, is gonna be the series of impacts and they're just the limit to the government and uh, related to this, and not only to compensate, to mitigate those environmental damages. One of the things that we were saying when we use the valuation, economical valuation, valuation for economical and is to evaluate their environmental liabilities. This is just an exercise that I did, that I took as a research, research uh, to evaluate economically all the environmental liabilities or impacts not compensated. per tons. Every single ton that is extracted in Colombia, we're gonna call is included environmental liabilities. We're talking about $150 or in order to this because of the tons and extracted ones as well. So the environmental liability with a bigger value is the pollution of the air and the soil as well. If you do the comparison with the added value that generates the coal mining in these territories, related to operational expenses, um, uh, government, it's gonna be minimum. It's just a third part of this, uh, environmental when we say it, does it work to continue extract when there are more expensive ones related to the benefits and this mining uh, uh, expensive we took this kind of tools as well I have this uh, graph in Spanish and in English. We're going to be introducing among them, swapping them. What I want to say here, this graph, what represents is the study of Colombian Turkey chain of coal handling because the fossil fuels, there are too many layers or in English, Layers, as you said in, in English, on every single stage and in every single layer is the way it was the marketing layer, the physical layer, and exists a final layer with its environmental liabilities of all the global chain related to coal and those environmental liabilities are within the whole chain of the climate change, of the loss of public health, contamination of air and dispersion of dust. And those the kind of things we talk a little bit, we don't talk about this. We're talking about the liabilities layer, but what happens with the other effects of the loss of public health, dispersion of, of dust and trying to analyze every single of the impacts and the effects as well and the social effects against those effects and those impacts. So I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be like that. Thank you very much, Andrea and Marina. We have some uh, questions from students. Moises. Hello, can you hear me? Well, I don't know, I have a kind of issue with the audio of Andrea. 
the professor had so many issues, but Andrea cannot hear, Marina can hear very well. But my question goes to, not specifically to Professor Andrea, but because of the research of work, and is, uh, we know in Colombia, there is a generation of pack of energy, Olica Energy in the North or Guajira, and is uh, knowing that we have that resource, the extensions of lands as well, and the natural resource available, why Colombia doesn't give the step, hasn't, hasn't given the step to generate clean energies of those energetical transitions. And on the other side is, do you believe the presidential candidate that proposed the renew the exploration and extraction of coal in Colombia could be an option to that wish in transition and energetical transition? Thank you, Moises. I would like to answer all the questions. Uh, we're going to hear the others. Do you agree, Andrea? Yes, I do. Danai? Yes, good morning, everyone. My name is Danai Pardo. I'm a student of Master of Territorial Sustainable Maestry, as well as the Professor Andrea said, there are too many companies that generate contamination to generate this contamination. They acquire, they generate incomes, high incomes when they contaminate. And here in Colombia, when they generate those incomes, they buy, they don't pay the taxes and as well, they, they don't accomplish their impunity uh, because we don't have a legal law, which is the entity of generating the economical valuation in the environmental conflicts. So we see the environmental justice. That's my question, thank you. Andrea, do you have any kind of comment? Well, we're going to answer those two questions and there are more questions in the chat. There are too many questions in the chat. So we're gonna answer two or three questions. Of these two questions uh, related to Moises' questions, it's very specific for Colombia. So I invite you guys to have more open questions at global levels in order to go to the conceptual way as well. That's why I'm going to start with uh, the, the nice question. Related to conceptual and public policies as well, who's gonna be in charge of these valuations, economical valuations, I would like to ask Marina, in fact, in Germany, uh, you have been working in some other countries. What about the regulation of the economical valuation in the projects of any project, infrastructure, for example, or infrastructure project that affects an ecosystem? Is there any kind of regulations to do the economical valuation of those impacts? I'm going to answer from by Colombia for the study of environmental impact that uh, should accomplish the biggest amount of companies when they have a project. There is a regulation from ministry when they is asked for the economical tools and there is a book even of the uh, environmental ministry it gives a guideline of how to do so but I, what i have analyzed they have just a, like a guide but they don't have mandatory or necessary so when we have a infrastructure project 
is the economical value, the incomes, profits. It's not mandatory to compare with economical impact. So I do believe it seems uh, the planifiers, the territorial planners of the academic ones, of the environmentalists to recuse, to have a, re a request of any project would be a tool, a mandatory tool to describe if we do so or not. So that's by my side. I'm going to say just a final minutes to answer this specific Moses question. And after I'm gonna give the floor to the professor Marina from, from Moises, uh, what I'm telling you, these projects of, uh, of this, uh, what we call, and the companies and multinational companies where they're coming with eolic, eolic projects as well. They come as infrastructure, I guess, with a system of exploitation of the territories because they don't uh, employ the territories of the communities and those huge aspects what we do is just in the transition, energetical transition, we can work on the decentralization or this privatization of these now renewable energies and to permit communities in order to have uh, solar energy. Uh, what is happening because there's not a benefit to them as well. And related to the president and any kinds of action, uh, political action as well, the contracts and everything, they should have a support on the petroleum extraction. They should have a support uh, confirmation of the different players. It's just a very conflicting decision and it doesn't have a stand or a consensus, how could be done transition. And over, well, we're gonna give the floor to the professor. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, I can, as I said, I work as the project manager to plan wind, wind farms in Germany. So I can, uh, so what I'm now saying is not applicable just for wind farms, but if you would like to build any kind of road, any bridge or something like this, you are really obliged to do an environmental impact assessment in Germany. I'm not sure if it's a European law or if it's just, uh, yeah, I, yeah, I think it's a, it's a European law and it's really strict. So you really need to take into account any kind of issues that are related to to humans, that are related to the environment, um, that are related to the soil. So you really need to, to calculate what kind of, uh, or, or how much soil you need, what kind of soil you, you um, use, um, what kind of uh, issues the, the problems have. For example, wind farms produce some kind of noise, um, and it's uh, it's visible in the landscape, and uh, it's also uh, also wind farms have some impacts on the environment. So you need to conduct an environmental impact assessment. It's mandatory, and also the public is involved. So that that you need to present your uh, results to the public. There will be hearing, and afterward the authority is deciding if the project can be built or not. And uh, there are a lot of um, big roads that are planned in Germany, so in northern Germany, where they are calculating birds for years because they know that there is, um, I don't know exactly the name uh, of, the, of the bird, but it's, uh, uh, a second, because, uh, yeah. So there, there are, for example, a, a white-tailed eagle, which was found in an area where you would like to build a road 
or where the government wanted to build a road. And because um, the, the, the eagle was breeding in this area, um, they needed to, to, um, to, have, to, to see how this eagle reacts, where it flies to, if, uh, yeah, and where he's eating, uh, over three years, I think. And now there is no decision currently. So we are waiting, so we're waiting for years on the decision of the authority. So that means that you really need to, it's not really placing every time monetary value on the effects or on the, the effects of the projects that we're doing, but you need to really identify what kind of impacts on the environment uh, will be done with the project. And it's mandatory, mandatory and the authority will decide afterwards um, if the project can be built or not. So it's basically with every kind of project that we have uh, or bigger project that we have in Germany. I think it's good, but it's, if, if, if uh, you, or when I was planning wind farms um, and because I also had the motivation that I wanted to do something good also for the environment, then I think it's really also necessary. You can also say that, okay, why you should monitor an, just one eagle for three years if you would like, oh, if we need more renewable energy energies, but I think this is the sustainable way also on, on uh, planning um, wind farms. Um, yeah, so I think that uh, it's it's a strict um, process also in, in Germany. We have 30 minutes left, so it would be a good idea to go to the final presentation. So Marina, uh, we're going to give you the floor. I'm going to ask, I'm going to leave the, all the questions just till the end. Totally agree. So we're going to have just the final session. Okay, so now we will talk uh, about the sustainable development goals and trying to have somehow a debate on the sustainable development goals. For this, I will give the introduction and then uh, Andrea will present the critiques uh, on the sustainable development goals. So, for, so to begin, what are sustainable development goals? I don't know if everybody of you knows what this is. Um, in the year, or perhaps we can begin a little, begin a little bit further, in, in the year um, 2000, the United Nations developed the millennium, or oh, no, in the year, I don't know exactly, the, the United Nations developed the millennium development goals, where they said that um, in the year 2000, they wanted to er eradicate poverty on the global level. And for that, they um, introduced eight goals. Um, but in the year 2000, uh, around 2015, they, they have seen that it was not enough. And then uh, the United Nations came up with the, the um, uh, 17 Sustainable Development Goals. You can see these 17 Sustainable Development Goals on the slide. And the, um, they all have an equal pri priority. But the main focus is basically to er eradicate poverty at the global level. And the sustainable development goals go from, so really the eradication of no poverty, zero hunger, good health and uh, well-being, quality education, gender equality, clean water and sanitation, affordable um, and clean energy, decent work and economic growth, industry innovation and infrastructure, reduced inequalities, sustainable cities and communities, responsible consumption and production, climate action, life below water, life on land, peace, justice, and strong institution, and partnerships for the goals. So you can see that the three aspects of environment, society, and economy are incorporated in all of these sustainable development goals, but they have a more detailed focus. And it's uh, they came also up with not these... Um, three issues of environment, sustainable uh, environment, society, and um, economy, but with the five Ps. So that these, that these 16 sustainable development goals can be clustered um, in five um, aspects, under five aspects. So the people, prosperity, peace, partnership, and the planet. So that you can see that there's also more a focus also, for example, now on peace and not just on the society. 
And um, the, the last, the partnerships for the goals, the last goal is really important um, because this goal has no uh, indicator to, for example, increase uh, the, the or decrease the level of emissions, but it really would, um, is there to uh, combine uh, and uh, countries so that um, countries that don't have the financial resources to work on these um, sustainable development goals to increase, for example, um, human health, to increase the uh, the gender equality, they should work together with other countries which have the financial resources so that it's also a global action so that no one should be left behind. Um, um, and behind all these 17 sustainable development goals, there are different indicators which are more quantifying what should be achieved um, and what really means, for example, poverty. Yeah, if there are no questions, then I think I will give to Andrea now. Thank you, Marina. What I got here is just the introduction of a question. And I have it in Spanish and I ask as the interpreter. If you can help me with the interpreting, this is a question that I want to bring in the debate that we have been discussing related to the ecological and environmental economies, the tools, and every single of the sciences as well. And for Marina, for me, we do believe the debate of the ODAs, uh, this uh, science can contribute to sustainability and to create a debate. Why growth, economical growth is contradictory with reaching the others ODAs and the env environmental justice, taking into account the ecological focusing of the economical system. And if you could, uh, and I can copy the question. In order to just have it present, and we really like to the students that they haven't spoken, they open their mics. And of course, Andrea is gonna moderate the questions with R in the chat and the intervention of the students. I just want to ask them for the word for some students in order to... Naibud, you said that uh, you cannot hear us. Can you hear us? Andrea, if you can ask her, for example, if you... I can hear you perfect. Because of the interpretation, sometimes you can hear... Naidu, can you hear us? Good morning, you all. Dainu de Niebles, I'm a student of Magdalena's University, Master of Sustainable Maestry. I have a question initially. Uh, I have to ask for Marina's uh, question. Taking into account of the, um, the payments because of the ecosystems, it has been a generator of incomes in the world. And practically, they have been used as a trend in strategic planning of sustainability in the point of to include value and listen to the professor talking about agendas. I would like to know, I would like to know conservation. which has been the Germany's uh, policy to the recovery, to the 
productive incomes to the green economy or circular economy? That's my question. So if I got it right, so what is um, the, what in, in Germany uh, is the, oh no, sorry, can you per perhaps repeat it because I, I think I lost the, uh, some last part. Unfortunately, I cannot hear anything. Can you hear something? I'm sorry, I have. So I think I have some problems with my connection. That's why I have some problems. I can I can hear you very well. I just the uh, is that maybe that the the, the the student, the student is writing the question in order you to have a better idea of the question per se. Yes, I'm writing down the question. So maybe in the meantime, if there is a question in the chat, Marina, there is a question for you. Maybe we tackle that question. In the meantime, I do uh, uh, write her question. And the question is, what does environmental accounting look like in Germany? Is it established that the organizations should apply it or is it optional as in Colombia? Does environmental accounting exist? So basically, um, we have a lot of uh, accountings, uh, a lot of uh, things that we need to take into account. Um, and the, a lot of things are also um, not optimal but they need to be done. So as I said that, for example, in the, in the case uh, of, um, of the wind farms, we need to do the environmental impact assessment. At the national level, there are also environmental accountings. Um, some countries, um, I, I'm, I haven't seen basically a, a green GDP um, calculation, but they really tried to, to uh, calculate on the country level. Um, but I, I would assume that, that this also exists, but um, my research focus is not so much on Germany, that's why I can uh, not say something um, to this, but um, perhaps I can also refer to one question that was in the chat, because I think that uh, perhaps not everybody knows what exactly um, valuing the environment means or what kind of different techniques and exist because uh, I have seen that the, this question was also there. So um, basically there are a lot of different techniques that you can use to uh, value the environment. Uh, either you do some contingent valuation where you really ask people um, what is the willingness to pay for them. So what is the value, for example, of the environment to the people? Um, of course, there are a lot of critiques. So you can uh, just ask questions uh, to people that are somehow living in the surrounding area. So how much they would be willing to pay because they really use the environment. If you would ask somebody living in Germany, how much it, I would be willing to pay to conserve the environment in Colombia, it would look totally different than if I would ask how much I would be willing to pay to conserve the environment in Germany because I directly use the environment here. So that's why there are also, um, you can, so the best answer is from those people living really nearby the, the uh, topics that you are asking. But there is also some habitat equivalency um, method, for example, where you, uh, for example, if you um, think about an oil spill and uh, you know that this oil spill um, damages the environment, um, and then um, basically you try to find out all the different aspects that were um, negatively impacted. So from the tourism sector to the fishes that are living in the sea, to um, the beaches, to uh, so everything that could be, um, that was impacted uh, from this oil spill. And there you um, 
tried to uh, calculate uh, from biophysical processes um, what uh, recreational, uh, no, what uh, what um, uh, what the the the, the um, animals, for, for example, uh, um, how much animals were living in this area. Um, but you also tried to find the economic value of the recreational sites, so that you try to. Um, have somehow to try to calculate from the oil spill and to find a value um, what needs to be done to uh, have the, the, um, um, the, the, the value of the um, oil before the oil spill. Um, but then you also have the, I don't know if I already said that, travel cost method. Where you ask people that they are going that are going to a national park, for example, uh, how much money did they spend to go there, and then you can um, try to calculate what is the worth of this um, national park for people, for example. Um, um, but you also have for some things that really can be incorporated into market decision. You have also market values for. So um, there are a lot of different techniques. And I think that for all the techniques, there are some criticism. Um, and uh, there are also some biases that can exist. Um, but I think that it's good to have a starting point um, to, to find out values where you can then um, discuss about. Yes, Joaquin, you were you were saying that you were raising your hands too much time time ago. I already have two questions that are overlapping and is related to the second case. And listening to the address, professor, professor Andrea, remember related to the summit and related to something called my attention. And um, in Glasgow. For the first time, related to this, it says the article makes a reference of in Glasgow for the first time, the closing statement of a climate conference made a specific reference to the damage of carbon and fossil fuel subsystems, the main sources of greenhouse gas emissions. Then a group of intervened countries commit to the use of electric vehicles as a prompt goal, but the reaction of a huge fossil fuels business, dozen, that is not possible. So there is a group that commits, first of all, to improve the things related to contamination that is generating. But logically, the economy of the huge economical uh, economies, they, are, they, they, they have a rejection of this. In the same article, says that it gets attention to Glasgow, the Alok Sharma ends and apologizing for how they had softened it and to what has to do with this call and use of fossil fuels. How far are produced? So we have the first question, and it's precisely until where huge countries, contaminant huge countries, they are going to be able to help with the cold in 2015, something that uh, Marina was saying at the beginning to eliminate the carbon footprint as well, the use of a car coal and to this position to pay the costs are related to my first question that I uh, already wrote to understand that there is an, a stipulated chart of values that goes according to the damages to the contaminants as well, and taking into account the, effect, the affection of uh, damaged ecosystems as well. And precisely, also, according to the friendly fuels as hydrogen, there are some research of small companies and huge people, groups of people, they are analyzing, they're working with this fuel on a really low scale. But you can see, you can see the low interest of this kind of interest because it goes against the huge machineries of the fossil 
Fields, thank you. Well, I'm going to see the Nairut question. It has been, we're gonna take these final 10 minutes in order to talk about this. She says, from conservation and environmental recovery, which is a successful experience in public policy applied in the generation of productive income from the green or circular economy. I don't know, Naiduth, if you want to add something to your question. Well, we're going to release it like that. I'm going to give the floor to both professors to comment uh, these two questions, and we're going to close the class today. I don't know, Marina, if I can answer Joaquin's question and you answer Nairu's questions, if you agree. So we're gonna awesome. give the ideas of every single question. Well, from Joaquin's question, I guess it's a question for all, all of us, Marina. What about the commitment of a country's uh, commitment to reduce CO2 emissions? Uh, what about the struggle of the commitments of so many sectors? It, it goes, um, what I have to talk, what I have to say about it because uh, it goes in, uh, and these uh, summits of, uh, Climate change are very critical, and criticisms of mo mo social movements as they represent Greta, represent these conventions of weather change. Uh, they speak too much, but they don't do anything of concrete actions. And I do believe what we are lack of a bigger participation, every single of the participants. electrical payments. And what happened with the other sectors? In order to conceal, and I guess we are sure of that part with the Glasgow, which is among the presidents, politicals, politicians, but the mitigation of the weather change are the huge companies or or some initiatives according to those conventions. And there is no negotiation and uh, those commitments and how to mitigate them because of the companies, they commit themselves per sectors. They commit themselves that every single company communicates their conditions of those transitions. What's gonna happen with the employees? with the mining employees, with the energetical and mining employees, what is gonna happen with them is more like the, uh, a nego political negotiation they should be with all the sectors. That's my point of view. I'm going to close and after we're going to give the word to Marina and I'm going to link the question that we did with economical growth and the ODAs, what Arlette was asking us related to the environmental justice and the ODAs as, as well, and uh, Joaquin's question related to the Glasgow, Glasgow's um, incongruities related to certain sectors because they say the opposite. That is thankful related to physical terms is more material, more energy, more fossil fuels. Um, that's gonna be a degradation, environmental degradation who goes in the opposite related uh, 
related to mitigation of poverty and hungerness. There are some contradictions because they go counterway because uh, a transparent relationship related to the economical growth of nature who gives, provides some services. The mitigation of poverty, crucial for equity and gender as well, and so many other aspects. I'm going to give the, I'm going to close the analysis. I'm going to give the floor to Marina. So Marina, I'm going to give you the floor about it. Yeah, thank you. So perhaps also some words on uh, Glasgow, because I think that um, there are a lot of critiques uh, we could place on these conferences, I think. But if the, the question is always, so what would we do if we won't have these conferences? Um, so I think it is really also really important to have somehow um, a floor for debates. And even if we think that, well, we didn't achieve anything in this conference, I think there were also some achievements that were that uh, could have been made. So um, I see the point that it's it's uh, really difficult. But if we um, if we just imagine that we are sitting with I don't, 190 countries um, together trying to find a common solution, and I think this is also somehow a little bit the problem. Um, also for the sustainable development goals, um, what we could say that I think that we really need country specific. Um, solutions um, so that we also perhaps have common sustainable development goals, but that the targets or that the solutions need to be somehow country specific so that we that we can uh, somehow try to avoid these problems of either having more um, social equity uh, or more environmental um, justice or something like this. So that's why I think um, it's always the problem, I think, for these both. We can say that, okay, we can, we don't need uh, economic growth for some countries, but we cannot say, okay, so that, that we just have the problems of the environment and the society. But these are really strong, um, strong aspects that we have. And I think that there will always be some aspects against each other because, well, we are living on the earth and we are influencing the environment. Um, but I think that also nobody really um would like to say okay then we just take the environment so because we know that we cannot just take everything what what resources are and we really need to be sustainable uh, at a certain level so um that's why i think that it's that also from my point of view and also from the environmental uh, economy perspective i think that it's important that we have some mechanisms some goals even if we know that we will never achieve them but if we won't have anything, then I think it wouldn't be able, we wouldn't be able to tackle all the problems of the climate crisis, um, I think. Thank you very much, Marina. Thank you very much, Andrea, for sharing us, for sharing your ideas with you. Thank you very much, the students to participate and we invite you again to get into the Triad's uh, web page to get involved with the final activities that we have in 2022 and all the possibilities that you can take advantage with these meetings with different activities. So I invite you to take into account and to take advantage of this. Thank you very much, Andrea. Thank you very much, Marina. Thank you, Andrea. Thank you very much, Marina. Thank you very much for the uh, topics, Andrea's uh, topic as well. We are getting ready for the agenda, for the questions and everything to be clear and to try to think and the best way to present these two sciences and to contribute to this tragic uh, conceptual site. It has been really great to be here from the two visions. I'm really thankful because of this preparation and the preparation of the virtual class together.
Yeah, thank you very much also from my, my side. I think it was uh, really interested, interesting uh, to have some kind of discussion. And I think we also need more some kind of this, uh, discussions. Um, yeah, so thank you very much for everybody that was uh, involved. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you very much. Have a great day. Bye bye. bye. Take care. Thank you very much. Have a great day, everyone. Thank you, professors. Excellent discussion.